On the third day, the lawyer gave his life to the care and direction of his creator and said he was perfectly willing to do anything necessary to stay sober. That afternoon, he put on his clothes and walked from the hospital. He never drank again. Um, it took me a while to get to that point. I'll talk a little bit about it. I don't want a war story too long. But uh, I was homeless for several years. I was a heroin addict and alcoholic. I went to many programs. Most of them I was sentenced to because I really didn't like being incarcerated. And my third day experience was a little bit different than his. I, uh, my third day was on the third day of race riots. <laughs> After watching uh, someone that I had just been playing cards with get his eyeball smashed in. That didn't look like the kind of life that I wanted. But unfortunately, that was the kind of life that I was leading. So on that third day of race riots, my sister came and visited me and said, uh, Danny, what are you going to do differently? She said, you're on your way to another program. You've been to many programs. You do the same thing when you get out. You shoot dope. She said, the only way you're going to do this is with God. And I went back to my rack and I prayed. and. At that moment, I believe, is when I turned my will and my care over to God because I couldn't manage to keep myself sober or out of the situations that I was constantly encountering. Go ahead, let you go. So I decided to go ahead and give God a try. He couldn't do any worse than I was doing. So when I got out, uh, I was frustrated very frustrated actually. They told me to get a job. I'd never worked a sober day in my life. I had done mortuary driving off and on and I wasn't even responsible enough to do that really. I'd lost bodies all the time. I would go to the hospital to pick up a body. I'd go in the bathroom, do a shot, come out all freaked out. Where's my body at? Somebody stole it. And uh, usually it was just on the other side of the hall. Fortunately, it just took me a while to come back and find it. So when they told me to get a job, they didn't really tell me how to get a job. They just said to get a job, and they helped me put a resume together. And uh, my resume said, like, institution, 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 mortuary driver. And uh, people didn't want to hire me with that resume. As it's outstanding as it, of a resume as it is, it really didn't get me anywhere. to actually take the time and effort and put some work into myself to help change my behaviors and I really didn't know how to do that but I was going to meetings a lot because I was required to go to meetings like four days a week pretty much and uh, I went to a meeting I won't say the name of it but it's in La Jolla and it's a speakers meeting and I really didn't feel welcome there I felt really out of place and this lady that looked like June Cleaver comes up to me and says hey, are you new? And I was a little offended. I mean, I had on a sleeveless chachi vest with some studs on it. And I was like, yeah, why do you ask? And she goes, somebody here you might know. So she goes into the meeting and she comes out with this guy with a tattoo on his head and he's wearing a suit. And I look at him, I'm like, I don't, I don't know this guy. <laughs> he looks at me like, oh, I guess we're supposed to know each other. And so that guy actually took me to my first men's meeting. And I really wasn't excited about a men's meeting. I had just got out, so I wanted to be where there was actually women, not with a bunch of more dudes. And he asked me if I had a sponsor. I said, no, I don't have a sponsor. So he turns around and grabs this guy and says, hey, uh, this is your sponsor. And that guy sponsored me, and he took me through the 12 steps. I went through the 12 steps several times. And uh, I'd like to say that I changed immediately, but it takes a while for your character defects to be removed when you have about 17 years of criminal behavior and heroin addiction to work through. So it took me a few times going through the steps. And, uh, you know, I did become gainfully employed. And I had a spiritual experience. And uh, the book talks about a psychic change. Um, and emotional upheaval. Actually, uh, I felt that psychic change probably, it took me about two years into sobriety to actually feel the full effects of the psychic change. And one of the things that I would like to, uh, to leave with you guys is uh, to 
of scripture, it's, you know, it helps me out a lot. It says that God will not tempt you beyond what you can bear, and he will provide a way out. And I didn't always see that he was opening doors because they weren't the doors that I wanted. They were doors that, you know, maybe that I had envisioned for myself. And uh, God has a much different plan for me than I had for myself. So if there's anything that I can share with you, is just uh, stay open. Thanks.